Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In Revelation chapter 4 and verse 8, a great scene in heaven. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Here is Matt Bowring singing, Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions, and we search God's holy word, the Bible, in order to find the answers. Question number one. What were the Urim and Thummim? We go to Exodus chapter 28, verse 30, as well as two other portions in the law of Moses, Leviticus 8, verse 8, and Numbers chapter 27, verse 21. And here is the mention of these gemstones. I read from Exodus 28 and verse 30. You shall put in the breast piece of the judgment the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be over Aaron's heart when he goes in before the Lord. And Aaron shall carry the judgment of the sons of Israel over his heart before the Lord continually. Urim means lights, Thummim means perfections. They were gemstones. We are unacquainted with exactly how these were used in decision making among the sons of Israel, but here were these devices or these gemstones. Some have surmised or, or thought that perhaps they glowed, perhaps uh, there was some means of the one indicating this way or that way. We simply do not know except that they were something whereby the sons of Israel in times to come following Moses were especially to use them. Now, it's interesting that there is the mention of these and then very quickly they disappear 
from use, we find that after Moses there was Joshua, and Joshua kept the children of Israel generally serving the Lord. But after Joshua and that generation parted and went to their graves, we have the time of the judges. And in the time of the judges, we have it sadly said that every man did what was right in his own eyes. They didn't even care what God's judgment was, what God's say so on anything was. They were doing it their way. And so here we have something that was discarded. Question number two, what does the Bible say about gossip and slander? The Bible has to say an enormous amount about these things. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 1, we read, You shall not bear a false report. Do not join your hand with a wicked man to be a malicious witness. The Apostle Paul, as he was beginning his letter to the church in Rome, the very severe chapter 1 and verses 29 and th uh, 29 and 30, he says, filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They are gossips, slanderers. Here are people who have departed from God and they are receiving in their persons the judgment of God. Second Corinthians, Paul once again, second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 20 Paul speaks of the Corinthians, I am afraid that perhaps when I come I may, I may find you not to be what I wish and may be found by you to be not what you wish, that perhaps there will be strife, jealousy, angry tempers, disputes, slanders, gossip, arrogance, disturbances. And James chapter 1 verse 26 also, but let me hasten to Psalm 141. The question is, the, or the answer is plainly, the Bible speaks of these things, and it says that God's condemnation is upon them. God is not pleased in any way, shape, or form with, with gossip or with slander. But hear a prayer that the psalmist utters, Psalm 141, a psalm of David, O Lord, I call upon you, hasten to me. And the third verse, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. It's good for us to pray that and to say, Lord, I need you to set a guard over my mouth. The Apostle Paul also spoke good words of instruction to his young associate, Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12, some were looking down on Timothy and they were discarding him as a young pastor. Paul said, look, no, let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity, show yourself an example of those who believe. What are we to do? when others are gossiping or slandering us, Paul says to Timothy, look, you be the example of what is right and proper. If you go around trying to snuff out every fire and every bit of uh, slander and all of this, you're going to get nowhere. Let it fly against the wall. Let the mud dry and fall to the ground. You simply do exactly what God would have you to do. And as best as you can, forget the slander and just march forward. I often think and, and refer others to Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 21, it says, Do not take seriously all words which are spoken, so that you will not hear your servant cursing you. Now, perhaps you don't have a servant, but you have people who are speaking unkindly and foolishly about you, even to the point of gossip and slander. Don't listen. Don't listen to what they say. Foolish words 
they are legion. One last one, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 8, the Paul, Paul again speaking good words of wisdom about these very things. If you wish to hear or to read the text of these answers, we are now posting them on our website, faithtoliveby.ca. And should any of this have gone by a little bit too quickly, you can re uh, review it there. Should you have a question that you wish to submit for the Bible has the answer, you may send it to us at Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Heidi, Dorothy, and Jan come singing, Have You Any Room for Jesus? And then Rick and Tim sing, Pass Me Not.
delighted to announce another new music project by the Faith to Live By musicians. God So Loved the World. 13 songs, solos, duets, trios, as well as the full group singing two songs. Here are just a few of the 13 songs. Saved by Grace, Now I Belong to Him, Jesus Paid It All, Pass Me Not, Have You Any Room for Jesus, His Name Lives On, and seven more titles. This CD, in, as with all of our productions on Faith to Live By from Resources, they are sent out free in postage paid simply upon your request. If you wish to have a copy, write to us, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6, or call us toll free 1-833 Three six seven three eight five two. Also, our website, faithtoliveby.ca, has a means of you requesting a CD to be mailed to you, or you can go there and, at no charge whatsoever, download the 13 audio files directly to your tablet or phone or computer.
After Jesus went to the cross, was buried, raised, he met with his disciples for 40 days. During those times, they must have had wonderful experiences together. How we would love to have known more. But the disciples did not even yet fully comprehend the cross and what God was up to. They asked Jesus, and Luke records this for us at Acts chapter 1. Lord, is it at this time that you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? And here is what Jesus says to them. It is not. There are certain things that are out of bounds for the child of God, for the disciple, for the apostle, for the church leader, for the believer in Christ. Jesus says, it is not... And then he goes on. That is good for us to understand that there are certain things that are to be our focus and there are certain things that are not to be. It is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority. And there is no greater authority than God the Father. And God the Father has placed certain things determinately he has poured them in concrete, and they are there. But Jesus says, that's not your concern at the moment. There is something of eternal concern for you, but your question is not hitting the mark. It is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but... What a difference between what Jesus says in verse 7 of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But he says, you, you will receive power. There will be a charging of your spirits. There will be something that comes upon you that is absolutely unexplainable but that it is God at work in you and through you. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. Here were 12 11 men, Judas was off the scene at this time. Here were 11 men, and Jesus puts in front of them a mind-blowing proposal, proposition. He says, you are going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem. Now, that would have been a task enough. It was no insignificant city. But he says, then in the province round about Judea, and immediately to the north, Samaria, okay, I think we can do this. But he goes on to say, and to the remotest part of the earth. Physically, in themselves, it was absolutely impossible. But Jesus knew that empowered by the Spirit, and if those disciples were listening, if they had any comprehension they knew in themselves that they were weak. They had been very limited in their movements to that point. There were no international travelers among them. They were limited in their sphere of influence. None of them were high or mighty. Perhaps a, a few of them had some connections, 
but none of them were great in themselves. But Jesus knew they didn't need to be, and that if they had been great in and of themselves, it would have been a detriment. He knew that the power of the Holy Spirit would come upon them and make up for every lack which they had. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. You will testify about me. You don't need to make up the story. You just need to tell what you have experienced. You just need to declare what you have seen and what you have been a part of to a world that needs to hear that God so loved the world that he sent his Son into this world in order that whoever might believe in him, believe that he came in the flesh, believe that he died upon Calvary's death, Calvary's cross, an atoning death for you and for me, that he died in our place, but that he didn't stay in the tomb. He was raised gloriously, and even as he lives, we too shall live for all eternity. You will be my witnesses. After he had said these things, Jesus was lifted up, and while they were looking on, a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing, they were just transfixed. Jesus had done so many things, they just couldn't pull themselves away. As they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, Behold, there were two men in white clothing standing right there. And this is what they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, this Jesus. Oh, I love that. It's not going to be someone else that comes back, but this Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. They're saying, you don't need to stand around here. There's things for you to do. You need to go back to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon you because there is a waiting world that needs to know through the power of the Holy Spirit the message of Jesus Christ who was sent of the Father into this world that we might truly live in him. Do, have you come to live in Jesus Christ? This is the message that you need to hear, that God loves you and that he has sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for your sins. How much more could he have loved you than what he has done? Would you come before him? Would you bow before him and say, Lord, I receive of your love, I receive of your forgiveness, and would you receive of my life? I surrender to you today. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 